Today's EMN5 is going to focus on resuscitation in pregnancy, and specifically in cardiac arrest. This study from resuscitation looked at 2 million women in the UK, and these are the top causes of cardiac arrest in pregnancy. Cardiac disease, surprisingly, is at the top. We always think about PE, of course, in pregnancy, and then these are some of the others lower down hypertensive disorders, hemorrhage, amniotic fluid embolism, ectopic pregnancies, and of course infection, and then homicide and trauma. So of course with any resuscitation, this is similar in pregnancy, you're going to start with your ABCs, which now we've converted to the CAB compressions first. So let's start with C of the CAB. You have a patient come in who's pulseless, who is pregnant. Don't worry about the fact that she's pregnant right now. Go ahead, start good chest compressions, get the pads on her, and see if she has a shock level rhythm. At this point, the best way to save the baby is to save mom. But that said, let's review some of the changes in resuscitation and CPR that you should think about in a pregnant patient. The diaphragm is much higher in pregnant patients, so CPR, you're going to do a little bit higher on the chest to have better compression. Now what about shocking the patient? Shocks are okay. Go ahead and get those pads on her. Again, with the higher diaphragm, you might have to place the pads a little bit higher. Now if this is a trauma patient and you're placing a chest tube, the diaphragm also affects this. You're going to place the chest tubes just a little bit higher in the third or fourth intercostal space. Now part of C is circulation. And in pregnant patients, you have to think about that IVC. There's reduced venous return because there's a big baby sitting on top of that IVC. And especially nearing term, you really need to get the pressure off of the IVC, and this has really been shown to increase cardiac output. So we have a couple options for this. One is this left tilt, so putting the patient some like a wedge or some towels underneath the patient and getting them over tilted left to get the baby off the IVC. This, however, is not so practical during CPR because you're not going to get good chest compressions at that angle. So instead, this is what I want you to do. You're going to manually displace the uterus off the IVC. You can do that either on the same side or opposite side as the patient. So if you have one person manually displace that uterus, you can have the patient remain supine and have much more quality chest compressions. Okay, so you've manually displaced that baby off the IVC. And now the other part of circulation we have to think about is venous access. Usually in code situations, we aim for femoral access. But because of poor venous circulation after about 20 weeks of gestation, this can change your medication delivery from sites below the diaphragm. So you actually want to avoid femoral lines in these resuscitations. So let's talk about medications during pregnancy. In the cardiac arrest algorithm, all these medications are either class B or class C in pregnancy, except one, amiodarone. So amiodarone is actually class D. So in a cardiac arrest, do CPR, do your shocks, use the drugs, all except one, which is amiodarone. So let's summarize the C part of our ABCs. Do the CPR a little higher, shocks are okay. For circulation, make sure and manually deflect that uterus off the IVC and don't use amiodarone. And lastly, therapeutic hypothermia has been shown to improve outcomes. So let's do a little summary about our airway and breathing. A couple tips here. One is that you want to make sure you're intubating these patients early. That's because they have higher secretion rates, they have a little bit lower pulmonary reserve, and they also have a higher risk of aspiration. That's due to higher intra-abdominal pressure and decreased lower esophageal sphincter tone. Because of some edema or weight gain during pregnancy, you might need to use a smaller ET tube. Another tip, usually after the patient is on a vent, we would do a little bit of permissive hypercapnia. In these patients, we do not want to do that. So think about just a little bit higher respiratory rate when you're placing these patients on the vent after intubation. And lastly, as far as positioning, try to have the head of bed elevated a little bit, both to decrease risks of aspiration. And also, if you use reverse Trendelenburg, this increases the residual capacity and gets the abdomen off the diaphragm. So if you have a pregnant patient with cardiac arrest and you're doing CPR, one thing you need to think about early is perimortem C-section. The indications for perimortem C-section are gestational age greater than 24 weeks. And remember, the fundus can be palpated right at the umbilicus at about 20 weeks, so you're looking for a few centimeters over the umbilicus. The second indication is having four minutes of CPR and still no pulse. So this is very early in the resuscitation. You need to think about perimortem C-section and make a decision. At four minutes, you need to make the decision. You need to have a delivery by five minutes. This early decision making is really tough, but it really gives the fetus the best chance for survival and can also increase the chances of resuscitating the mom. So three to remember for a pregnant resuscitation. For C in your ABCs, you're going to do CPR higher on the chest. Shocks are okay. Make sure to manually displace the fundus to the left. 
and don't use amiodarone. For your A's and B's, make sure and get that tube early and use reverse Trendelenburg positioning to get the baby off the diaphragm. Lastly, think about perimortem C-section early. Your numbers are greater than 24 weeks of gestational age and 5 minutes with no pulses. Here are the references and thanks again for joining us on EM in 5.